Welcome back to Real Garage. Today is a quick episode. We're doing a real scoop segment on the advanced settings of the Multimatic 220 ACDC. And we're doing a real gear segment on the wireless foot control option. Normally when I'm using my Multimatic 220, I run it in the auto set mode, which works great, especially in MIG. And I still have enough room to fine tune my arc. However, when I move into some of the TIG applications, I like to take and turn the auto set off. And it opens up some additional features that I'd like to run with you right now. Okay. So right now I have the machine set for TIG aluminum. My auto set is on. As soon as I turn the auto set off, you'll notice it brings up two additional parameters that I now have adjustment for. One is gonna be balance which controls the cleaning zone of the arc, and the other is the frequency, which controls the width of the arc. The pro set for the balance is 75, so you'll notice that pro set will pop up whenever you hit 75. That means 75% of my welding arc is on the electrode negative, and 25% is on the electrode positive. And the electropositive is the part of the welding arc that cleans the oxides off the aluminum. So if I lower that number down to let's say 70, that means I'm only welding 70% of the time and I'm cleaning 30% of the time. So the lower you run this number, the more cleaning effect you'll have on the welding arc. You'll notice that because that white etching next to the weld puddle will get wider. Normally you only need enough cleaning for the width of the weld puddle you're putting down. Any more than that's gonna be kind of a waste of energy. So typically I'll run mine around that 72 to 73. That's a pretty good starting spot for most of the stuff that I do. On my frequency, 120 is gonna be the pro set. That's double what a typical older transformer type machine can give you. They run at 60 Hertz. So the higher you push this number, the tighter the welding arc becomes. So it actually gets narrower. And that's great because it adds focus to your arc and precision. The lower the number, the wider the arc. And again, this one bottoms out at 60. That gives you a wider, lazier arc. So for me, depending upon the weld joint that I'm welding, I may run this a little bit higher to give me a tighter arc which works great if you're working inside a tight angle. But if I'm welding an outside corner weld, I need to widen that arc out a little bit so that I make sure that I tie in the two edges of the base metal. So I might run that a little bit lower. I might run that down about 80, maybe even 90 on the frequency. That will widen the puddle out a little bit. When working in DC, the additional feature that pops up on the screen is gonna be a pulser. The pulser default is off. Now what the pulser does is it just pulses the weld current from a low level to a higher level. It doesn't pulse it absolutely off. It just goes to a lower level to a higher level. The advantage of the pulser is that it does reduce the total heat going into the piece, which thereby reduces the possibility of warpage. Or if you're working with a temperature sensitive base metal like chromoly or even stainless steel, it's another good way of controlling that heat. So I typically run my pulser pretty low, anywhere from that 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1. If I run it a little faster, 1.2, 1.3 pulses per second, that helps me add rhythm to my weld puddle. Every time the machine pulses high, I'm dabbing the filler metal in. So it gives you a real consistent weld puddle look. You can run that pulser up on this machine to 150. The faster the pulses, the tighter the ridges are gonna look in your weld puddle. But an added bonus to that is it shakes the weld puddle up and gives you a better grain structure of the weld bead. So if you're welding dissimilar steels, again, let's talk about chromoly and maybe mild steel, it might behoove you to turn the pulser on and run the pulses up pretty high. Again, that agitates the weld puddle, gives you a little stronger weld bead. Now, check out this real gear segment on the wireless TIG foot control.
Today has been an exciting day for me because I finally got my hands on one of these wireless TIG foot controls. Okay, the part number of this thing is 301580. And I'm excited because even though it's wireless, what it does for me is it removes one of these cables. There's a lot of stuff going on here. You know, with the Multimatic, you've got your MIG gun, your TIG torch, your foot pedal, and a ground cable. So eliminating just one of those cables is just going to clear some of that stuff up, especially because it lays on the floor. So, you know, you're always tripping over stuff. So I'm going to show you what's all in the box. We're going to open it up, put it together, and see how it works. All right, so first thing I see is an owner's manual. So remember, read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. Uh, this looks like huh, the batteries and the receiver. Okay, so the batteries go in the foot pedal, but the receiver screws onto the front of the machine. So I'm gonna take and turn the machine off. I'm gonna unscrew my wired foot control. And that can go bye-bye. And this goes like that. Now I cheated and already read the manual online. And I know that these already come paired from the factory, so you don't even have to do any of that. You only need to repair the foot control to the receiver if, uh, if one of them gets damaged and you had to get a replacement. Uh, the foot pedal looks pretty close to the same foot pedal design as the wired one, except uh, the bottom of this one, it's more of a molded plastic. Uh, it's very strong and it's got four foot pads on it. Uh, this is also where you're gonna find the battery tray to put the batteries in. Let's knock that out right now. Another cool thing about this is it takes just standard AA batteries. So no special batteries to buy. I like the nice heavy locking screw. And that looks like it. Turn the machine on. Upward, all I gotta do here is hit the foot pedal and the machine turns on. That's it. So these things come digitally paired. So you could have a hundred of these in one location and they're not gonna interfere with, the, with one another. Another nice thing about these is they're electronically shielded too. So unlike regular RC technology, the welding machine puts out a lot of electrical noise and interference. I mean, that's just the nature of beast when welding. So it's very important that the remote controls are shielded properly so that the output of the machine doesn't start fluctuating because of that electrical interference. They also have a quite long range. Uh, I could walk this pedal 100 feet away from the machine and it'll still control the machine. So it's, uh, it's quite amazing. So we'll, uh, we'll do a couple weld tests with it. All right, I'm just gonna check the resolution of the pedal, see how close it is to the wired pedal. Wow, I stepped just on it and it struck the arc right away. Nice positive arc start. There's my weld puddle. The pedal is very smooth and steady. I'm going to throttle up and see. Oh, yeah, it's. It's very steady, very predictable. Now at the end of the weld, I feather off. Oh yeah, perfect. That'll definitely do. On the next episode of Real Garage, we're gonna finish putting the roll cage in the Trans Am project.